Last month, former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney, who was born and raised in Michigan, eked out a narrow victory in his home state. He survived one of the big fights in his attempt to get the GOP nomination for president. Yesterday, which was Super Tuesday, 10 states voted. Romney eked out an Ohio victory. And it is my pleasure to welcome political science professor Paul Quirk back to Studio 4. He is a Harvard University graduate, a citizen of the United States and Canada. He holds the Phil Lynn Chair in U.S. Politics and Representation at UBC and good morning. Thank you, Fanny. Not much has changed since the last time we talked, or has it? No, uh, uh, well, uh, only that uh, last time we talked, we would have expected more to have changed by now, you know, mm -hmm. so the expectations are a little different. I'm assuming that Democrat in the White House is loving this. Oh, absolutely. This is, uh, this is a nightmare for Republicans. They mm -hmm. are so eager to have this over, and it doesn't look like it's going to be over soon. Uh, so uh, this campaign could not have gone better from the standpoint of the White House. Is there someone who could step in, head, head of the Republican Party or someone else, and say, look, we have to stop the infighting, stop the beating each other up if we're going to win the next election? There, uh, U.S. parties don't have that kind of organization. There is no hierarchy. There's no one who has anything close to that kind of authority. Uh, the uh, candidates uh, have their sources of support, people who will uh, give them uh, funds to mm -hmm. campaign with. And as long as that keeps coming in, they can keep campaigning. And speaking of funds, uh, Santorum uh, suggests almost every day that he is running on a shoestring budget. Romney has deeper pockets, obviously. Yes. Well, Romney was uh, in this and was perceived as a leading candidate much, much earlier. So he was able to get organized and he was able to uh, raise a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And uh, since he was, he's still, after all, the front runner, uh, that helps raise money uh, also. But what happened yesterday uh, was, to a great extent, uh, a result of this money and organization that he has. You know, he, uh, he, he did win a substantial majority of the delegates that were uh, up for, uh, for winning yesterday. And, go ahead. You know, and, and that was partly because the other candidates, Santorum and Gingrich, weren't on the ballot in Virginia because of how hard it is to get on the ballot, lots of signature collecting all over the state. And uh, Santorum uh, didn't have delegates slates in most of the districts in Ohio. So uh, uh, Romney did well with delegates, but it was really this organization and money. Interesting. So organization yeah. and money talk, especially yeah. in U.S. politics. Yes. Uh, any surprises for you in the results yesterday? Let's talk about the results. Uh, Newt Gingrich won his state, Georgia. That's right. No, I would say that the, uh, uh, the results uh, yesterday pretty much tracked what it has been looking like for the last a week or so. Uh, I think it's significant that uh, Gingrich doesn't uh, do better, you know, in Tennessee or Oklahoma, other states that you'd think are, you know, similar culturally in some ways mm -hmm. to, uh, to Georgia. It really was a home state thing rather than, you know, an ideological uh, right. support for him. But uh, he's, so he, he continues to be very weak elsewhere. Uh, and uh, Santorum uh, was thought to be competitive in Ohio. There was a good chance that he would have w won. But in the last few days, uh, Romney had been leading polls in Ohio. So in Ohio. Everything, everything tracked. And yet, uh, as you know so well, no Republican has, Republican has ever won the White House without Ohio. So what is it about Ohio? Well, Ohio is just a, uh, a, a large state with a lot of electoral college votes. And it's an urban state that's relatively evenly divided. So it's, uh, uh, it's the biggest, uh, longest term swing state. Mm. Uh, and what does that mean? Well, it means that uh, sometimes Republican wins it in the general election, sometimes a Democrat wins it. It's uh, evenly divided enough that it can go either way. Many, many states are pretty solid in right. one camp or the other. Okay. So a swing state, uh, would it be a bit of a microcosm for the uh, whole is, United is, States of America, uh, perhaps? Uh, reasonably, reasonably so, but the, uh, it wouldn't have to be. Uh, it, it is to a, to a considerable extent. It doesn't really have quite as much Christian mm -hmm. evangelicalism as, as the South. 
but the key thing is that it's long been relatively evenly divided between Democrats and Republicans. If Romney gets the nod, will the Christian evangelicals uh, vote for a Mormon? Question. Well, I think I think you know I think that that will be uh, one of his problems. Uh, I, I think most of them will, but I would I would think that there are, uh, are enough who have, enough Christian evangelicals who are quite rigid on religious issues uh, that they'll uh, find his uh, you know, find some of the Mormon beliefs kind of uh, off-putting and, mm -hmm. and maybe not show up. So I think that would. I think there will be some difficulty. So or, rather than vote Democrat, they won't vote at all. Yeah, no, they, they would not vote Democrat. But the, the problem is <laughs> that's uh, true. <laughs> the problem is the turnout uh, and enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. He's got a big, big problem there. Uh, Romney won Alaska. Yes. Yes. Predictable. Uh, well, the, we didn't know too much about what was going to happen in Alaska. There wasn't a great deal of polling. There was actually some thought that uh, that Ron Paul could get his uh, only <laughs> or his first victory mm -hmm. at least in Alaska, but it didn't happen. Tell me about Ron Paul. Why does he stay in? I know you haven't called him lately, but <laughs> why do you think he stays in? Well, the, uh, everyone kind of says that you know, he, he can have as many elections as, in as many states as, as, as he wants, and he's going to be getting around 12% of, of, the, of the vote. Mm -hmm. He's not going to get more. He's not going to get less. He has really uh, solid support. So the question is, what does he gain by continuing to be in the race? Uh, he, he makes a statement for his views, and he may get some bargaining power, uh, depending upon how the rest of the race uh, goes, uh, if he, when he finally decides to uh, recommend somebody, you know, mm -hmm. ask his delegates to support somebody else. Right. At the can, moment, he only has 47 delegates, so not a lot of clout No. Well, at the moment. It, it's, it's, uh, whether it's a lot of clout or not, kind of depends on whether uh, Romney gets over a majority, mm. over 50 percent on his own. Okay. If he doesn't, if Romney has 45 percent of the delegates, de then Ron Paul's 10 sure. percent is a lot. Is, uh, uh, do is the, the math. Good. Yeah. Well, you're a Harvard boy. You can do the <laughs> math. <laughs> 1144, what's the magic number? Uh, uh, yes, that's right. That's the that's tipping the, point. Yes. Well, that's the uh, number of delegates that one needs to, to be uh, nominated at the... Uh, Convention. At the convention, and some of, and most of those are uh, s selected in primaries and caucuses, mm. but some of them are Republican Party office holders. Why do the primaries carry on so long? Last one, I think Utah. I know Montana's in the last. Montana's June five or something. Utah June twenty sixth. Last one. Yeah. Well, I think uh, you know what's really happened. I, I think the question is. Uh, more, why do they start so early? You know, okay. Because uh, you know, they're, the, the nominating conventions are you know, in July and August, mm. always are, late mm -hmm. July. And uh, to actually have the, the choice made by June is not all that late. But what's happened is that the states push, the, their push toward earlier uh, primaries because right. they want to have more influence. So sure. it keeps getting pushed back. I understand. Uh, so, uh, Newt Gingrich, we said Georgia, Idaho, Romney, Massachusetts, Romney, North Dakota, Santorum. Was that a bit of a surprise? Yes, that was. Uh, I, uh, you know, we didn't have this. One of the things that happens is we don't have very much polling from some of these uh, smaller, mm. less important states. People right. are not putting the money in it. So, states like Alaska and North Dakota, people are making some guesses about. Mm -hmm. And the guess was that uh, uh, Romney would win that. Uh, but he didn't. Santorum uh, did, did mm. very well, and that, mm -hmm. helps, that helps him some. And took Oklahoma, Tennessee, Santorum, right? Yes. And Vermont and Virginia Romney. Predictable. Right. She says, who's not the political scientist. <laughs> well, predictable well, to me. The Virginia, uh, in Virginia, only Romney and Ron Paul were on the ballot. And, uh, mm. and uh, he won that, but in an odd way. He won about 60 percent, 60 40 percent. So. Ron Paul got 40% of the vote in Virginia where there aren't, you know, where there are no other uh, right. competitors to. So as Romney's out. approval rating drops, according to some polls, yeah. his approval rating is dropping, uh, Obama's uh, rating going up. Who determines that? Who says the approval rating says? Well, these are polls. You know, people uh, people uh, uh, call people and just ask them, uh, mm -hmm. you know, do you approve uh, of so-and-so or, or disapprove? And uh, those are representative samples of the uh, whole country. So it's a pretty good barometer of the mm -hmm. uh, attitudes that people have. Right. Uh, any robocalls happening in the United States that you know of? 
Apparently, not, not, the, the robocall idea came from the USA. Well, they're robocalls, but uh, of course, but they're uh, but they're honest uh, for the most part. I have, there haven't been any controversies mm -hmm. about robocalling uh, for uh, you know for adverse purposes. One of the pundits the other day was suggesting that uh, Mitt Romney should go back to wearing suits and ties. <laughs> uh, that the Wranglers and the uh, plaid shirt is not doing it for him. People know he is not that guy. Well, you know, I think I, th I think it's Maybe a, little, it's. a little hard to put your finger on, but I think mm. there is something about Romney that does not come across to people as authentic. Uh, some of it is uh, the result of the fact that he has had to reposition himself um, ideologically, you know, and everybody uh, knows that. But I think there's just something about the way he uses his face and his voice mm. and his gestures and so forth that just doesn't come across uh, effectively to people. Right. So. It's a pro that's a problem. I don't think the Wranglers are the problem. Are the problem. <laughs> Maybe they're Levi's. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe they're GWGs. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, Professor Paul Quirk, our guest, he is the fill-in chair, holds the fill-in chair in U.S. politics and representation at, at UBC. We'll come back and talk more. Maybe uh, bring up Rush Limbaugh. Sure.